is that? It's red mercury. This is a weapon that would entirely change the balance of international power overnight, just like that. Everybody just stepped right in and showed up to be exactly what they should be and what they should do. What the hell are you doing here? You ignored my messages. And to be part of the gang and to use weapons and to do things that are big tasks in the world of the CIA. One of the things I really like to do is that at the beginning of a movie that's going to be an action movie is to sit back and say, what's going to be different? What haven't we seen? And whether that's something small, like a guy in the trunk of the car with taps of acid. Is there a human being in the trunk? Yeah. I've been caramelizing his onions for a couple of days. Caramelizing how? Uh, with three taps of acid and a lot of rats. Or taking a lotus through downtown London in fairly cool fashion. Big and small, these, these are fun things to sort of sit back at the beginning and, and play with. Actors playing with weapons, you know, it, it's always exciting, it's always fun. Want a gun? Yes. No, no gun? You know, the whole gun gag with Mary Lee Parker through the whole film and Marvin giving her guns and the guns going off accidentally. Everyone else has a gun. She has no idea what to do with this. I know exactly what to do with it. Oh! and then to see Helen Mirren spinning in the Lotus and firing out of both windows. It's all fun. I obsessively <laughs> research guns and pair them with characters, both for the capacity of what they can do in a scene and the personality of the person wielding it. Now, sometimes in the exigencies of production, things change and, you know, we do things different ways. Weapons do influence how we choreograph a sequence because often it can lead to the scene's actual creation. Give me a gun that really hurts. There's the scene in Paris where Han turns up and he shoots at Marvin and Bruce. and they're basically on the ground crawling along the floor and he's just shooting this automatic weapon which is destroying everything in front of it. So that kind of creates the whole scene in a sense because you know that you now can have fun and you can just carve up the whole area and you've got Beyond firing his gun and we did a bit of slow-mo with the bullets coming out. So yeah, that weapon kind of led that scene. The minigun uh, in, in, in Red 2, it's interesting, that was actually a prop craft. So that is not a brand name, a Gatling gun. I and mean, they shoot, I don't know how many thousand rounds a minute, but it's really just like a wall of lead and it can just tear, 3, you know, 3,500. Right. It can just tear, it it can, can tear a street apart. Marvin? Yeah. Is that a stick of dynamite in your pocket? Yeah, but I'm saving it for emergency. Well, this is kind of an emergency, isn't it? You know, I, d I don't specify generally between C4 and Semtex. They're, they're both plastic explosives in most people's mind. I, I don't think there's a difference there. Hand grenades only by use. So flashbangs versus uh, incendiary versus fragmentation, those definitely call. But there aren't enough producers, I think, to really get into the personality of the hand grenade in the same way that I feel the personality of a handgun or rifle could express itself. <laughs> You know, we're constantly in contact with the director and even the prop guy just to talk about the feasibility of one gun versus another. There's constant adjustments and, and constant discussion of that. There's also lots of differing opinions. You know, you hand an actor a, a weapon, they're going to have an opinion of, of their character and what they're holding that's equally valid to mine. Yun Hung Lee had two Glocks that he carried throughout the movie, and you see him pull them out when he comes to kill Frank which was actually interesting. They were uh, written as uh, Glock 35s, um, uh, which is the 40 caliber version. In terms of getting weapons in London where we were shooting proved very difficult. Um, and, and importing them from the US was, was to there was very difficult. They have a very different attitude about firearms in the UK, and so, uh, yeah, the laws are really, really tricky. So those are 
Glock 34s. Uh, no custom work. Now, that's a small thing, but uh, you know, it's definitely something you get to set and you're like, he would definitely have a bigger caliber than a nine. But you know, these are, you know, that's the way it goes. And it's amazing that almost everything we put in the movie made the show. I mean, from the, you know, from that gun to the Accuracy International Rifle. The Sig Sauer pistol that Frank essentially proposes to Sarah with. <laughs> They're all very carefully chosen. We worked really hard to have each of the characters in this movie and in this franchise have action that is very reflective of, of who they are. Whoa! Crazy old bastard. Frank, do you feel old? Not really. I mean, either. I mean, crazy sometimes, I guess. Marvin, absolutely crazy. Casually moving through the world with a 44 and happy to wave it around anytime, any place. Mary Louise Parker's character, Sarah, trying to figure it out, wants to be one of the group, doesn't have the skills yet, but is absolutely intrigued and enthusiastic along the way. Keeping busy, I see. Idle hands do the devil's work. Well, Mirren got her wings in the first film when uh, she, she was firing this big, huge automatic weapon. And she's back doing that and does really cool weapons scenes and somehow makes it look really sexy. There is nothing more sexy in the whole world than a beautiful woman with an incredible gun. You're such a romantic. The fun, I think, of seeing a woman of my age in full evening dress and very, very elegant, uh, you know, handling a Gatling gun, you know, that the, the, the contradiction of that was fun for people. Bollocks! With Han, who carries the knives in this movie, Benchmade's an American company that, that I think uh, creates an incredible product. And going through their roster, uh, they have a, a knife called the Bedlam, a Benchmade Bedlam, which is uh, not just a cool name, it's a, it's a stunning knife um, that looks beautiful and wicked all at the same time. So when he fights Frank in the end, uh, that's a bench and made knife. Are you having fun yet? I'll let you know. I just sort of think, once again, taking it back to character, the best killer in the world's gonna go for some of the best stuff in the world, and I thought that was an excellent pairing. Trevor Lee Call said, I just wanna be in this. I'd like to be in this film. I'd like to shoot weapons and run and fight and do fun things. There's something you don't see every day. 